Isle of the Dead is often hailed as being the worst first person shooter ever made. It was released in 1993 and developed by a team called Rainmaker Software. On paper it sounds decent enough, you're a pilot stranded on an island overrun with flesh eating zombies. Gameplay is a mix of point and click and first person shooting as you collect items and try to escape the island. It sounds fine, right? Well, it's not, and almost every single bad thing you've heard about this game is probably true. But the biggest revelation is that it's not the worst first person shooter ever made. It's not even the worst game ever made. Yes, it is. Isle of the Dead is at times confusing, frustrating, and tedious, but it is still largely playable, and for that single factor alone, I don't think it deserves the moniker of worst game ever made. But don't get me wrong though, it's utterly horrid across the board, and I'm going to dive in anyway and play it regardless. Why is that? Well, because I'm a stupid asshole with nothing better to do. So anyway, the game begins giving you absolutely no kind of backstory or context, dropping you on the island in front of a medkit and with the wreckage of a plane behind you. After searching the plane for supplies, you'll find yourself with a machete, compass, wire cutters, pack of cigarettes and a lighter, as well as a flare gun that will eventually be used to escape the island. Now, what I didn't know until I bought the game was that there's two versions of it out there. There's the normal version and what I guess is a censored version for the kiddies. In the censored version, the machete is replaced with a bamboo stick, the textures seem brighter, the music is different and a lot of the death animations are missing entirely. In one of the villages you visit, there's also a moment where you walk in on a native girl taking a shower, which I'm pretty sure isn't in the other version either. Another incidental difference is the location of the shotgun. Now, in the censored version, you get it right in the beginning, but in the original version, it's on the other side of the wrecked plane, forcing you to circle all the way around the island to grab it. On both versions, though, you get to see a half-naked girl strapped to an operating table and zap her with electricity or spray her with water, among many other things, and also kill countless child zombies. If you have a problem with either of these things, though, then maybe gaming isn't the hobby for you. So obviously the uncensored version is the one to get simply because it's got nothing held back and I think it's ironic that out of either version I could have bought and having known nothing about either that I ended up with a censored edition. In case you don't see the humour in that, Australia is well known for censoring lots of video games. Yes, it is. Isle of the Dead's closest comparison would be the games it ran on the Wolfenstein 3D engine and it also uses a similar graphics engine with only a ground, wall and sky texture. Sound effects and music are both basic and horrible to listen to, but it is saved by some humorous voice acting despite what little there is. Take it, Jake Dunbar. To be honest, there's not really all that much to see and do in this game. In fact, the map is actually quite small. The issue here is that it is downright confusing to navigate. After wandering around cluelessly for 20 or 30 minutes, I used Photoshop to make a map of the island. Yes, I was that bored and that lost. Making a map is pretty much essential for this game because the layout is incredibly confusing. The points with which you enter and exit each area use textures that are slightly different to every single other wall texture, making it very tricky to see them a lot of the time. Then on top of that, some asshole thought it would be a good idea to use the same entry and exit point texture on surfaces that are not entry or exit points. <laughs> Also, for some reason, the simple task of moving through areas is extremely difficult in this game, and even when you're mashing the forward button into a doorway, your character still won't pass through for some inane reason. Once you've got familiar with everything though, you'll see just how small the island really is, and there's only a handful of tasks you even need to accomplish to finish the game. And I think you could even finish it in like 15 to 20 minutes if you know what you're doing. Use your head, Jake. In a nutshell, you need to get a medallion off two chieftains, then speak to an oracle which tells you how to access the compound of the evil scientist responsible for all the zombies. In the compound, you kill the scientist, rescue a girl, craft an antidote for her, escape the island in a life raft and get rewarded for all of this with a three second long ending cinematic. There's no kind of inventory management, at least in the sense that you need to drop items to make room for others, but you often have to combine items with other items in your inventory or with elements in the game world like using wire cutters on trip wires or an oiled up rag on a rusty rifle so it doesn't backfire and blow your head off. Everything you see in this game you should pick up, from coconuts and bananas that refill your health, ammunition for your weapons, and literally everything else you see because every single item has a purpose and is needed to finish the game. Some of the puzzles in this game are also downright bizarre. There's one where you're required to sacrifice a wolf-like creature on an altar, at which point an oracle appears and rewards you with an Uzi. Now, how you're supposed to know that a wolf creature is the one to sacrifice is beyond me. I mean, I only knew about this due to a poorly thrown together walkthrough I found on the internet. All up, there's probably like five or six times total where you're in this point and click perspective, and the other 90% of the time, you're in the first person mode shooting zombies. 
On that note, the shooting is pretty standard for the time. You've got a machete, which is surprisingly useful, and you'll soon get a rifle and double-barreled shotgun, which will be your go-to gun for the majority of the game. The rifle has increased damage compared to the shotgun, but the rate of fire is piss poor, and it's not very effective. Zombies take anywhere from one to four hits to kill, as do bats and wolves, and there's often a dozen of them at once. Near the end of the game, you also get an Uzi, which is extremely powerful, but limited on ammo. Isle of the Dead allows you to use either a mouse or keyboard, and I found the keyboard much more effective during shooting, relying on the mouse only when it was necessary for the point and click segments, and navigating my inventory. I think the single biggest problem with this game, aside from the confusing layout, the horrible sound effects and visuals, is that every single time you enter a new area of the map, every single zombie respawns. <laughs> Now, to be fair, the game does give you an insane amount of ammunition and more than enough healing supplies, and if they didn't let zombies respawn, I guess the game would be too easy, but it does make it incredibly tedious having to clean house every time you move to a new area. You just can't sit still for more than like two seconds before something is attacking you, and your only other option is to try and run past them, but then again, this can pose an issue if you have trouble moving through doorways, as I mentioned earlier on. Or, you know, you can spend 30 or so seconds standing in a corner and killing every last zombie in the area with your abundant ammo supply. Then you go to the next room and do it all over again. Backtracking becomes a frustrating ordeal as you know where you need to go, but there's just so many goddamn zombies in the way that it becomes an absolute chore to get there. There is a difficulty setting that lowers the amount of zombies that spawn, but even on the lowest setting, it still pisses me off. It pisses me off! As well you should be. Every time you die, you have to hear that annoying evil scientist laughing maniacally, and sometimes you die so quickly that you don't even realize you're dead until you hear it. Now, this is probably what will turn most people off this game. They'll run right into it shooting things, die a few times, then see that annoying game over screen and call it quits. And yeah, fair enough, it took all of my willpower to keep playing this game, but truth be told, it does have a few enjoyable moments, despite how horrible it generally is. It would make game plot more interesting. I still think the honor of worst first-person shooter goes to Operation Body Count. If you want to truly see a game that scrapes the bottom of the barrel, then you needn't look further, Sunny Jim. Isle of the Dead is a piece of shit, don't get me wrong, but it's a playable piece of shit. And if you don't have the patience to finish it, well, at least you can tell everyone you've played it. If you really want to pick this game up, you can get it for dirt cheap on a site like eBay or Amazon, but don't say I didn't warn you. Take care, come back and see me sometime.